Today I'm going to be unboxing a Skywatcher AZ GTI mount and tripod, as well as a few other accessories. I had decided on this particular mount because I'm trying to create a mobile rig which will work with my Gran Turismo 71. This particular mount is quite light, it's very easy to pack away, it has Wi-Fi control making its portability even better, and it's got just enough carrying capacity that it can support my Gran Turismo 71. While it means I can't put a lot of accessories on my GT71, I can put at least a light camera, a small guide scope, and a filter drawer, and still have it be under the total weight that this thing is allowed to handle. Additionally, although the GTI was originally built as an altitude azimuth mount, it can be easily converted into an equatorial mount. While it won't have the same amount of accuracy as more expensive mounts, for my William Optics GT71 with its focal reducer at around 380 millimeters of focal length, it should have more than enough precision for what I need it to do. So the first box up is this one here. It looks like... Ah, so this is the William Optics High Latitude Base. I'll be using that in my conversion of this thing from an alt as mount to an equatorial mount. The High Latitude Base is a very high quality equatorial wedge. And the best thing about this is it actually converts between a high latitude and low latitude mode. Although they don't advertise that on the product page. So it seems to be made entirely of metal, which is really good for durability of the product. It's packaged quite well. Maybe a little bit too well. I don't think you actually need this thin plastic layer around it given all the bubble wrap. Kind of a waste of plastic, but... Okay, there you go. Like most William Optics products, this thing looks beautiful. Okay, next get next box. Ah, so this is the Stir Adventurer um, rod, and I'll need a, it'll have an adapter to allow it to work with the uh, Alt As GTI. But it comes with a rod and a counterweight. I may need additional weight besides this counterweight. Um, with my GT71, I'm approaching the maximum capacity of the Alt As GTI, and so I'm going to need a probably a bigger weight in order to be able to counterbalance it properly. Okay, next up is this rod. Um, I wasn't sure what length of rod I would need for counterbalancing, so I got the two different ones. Um, this rod here is from All Star Telescope, and it has the correct threading for the Alt As GTI, unlike the other one. Now uh, they don't screw together, I was hoping they kind of did. But whichever one, I'll have one that will work just out of the box, it might not be long enough, the other one will need an adapter, but will be long enough, so we'll see which one I end up actually using in the future. The rods themselves are fairly inexpensive, so I'm not too worried about it. And worst case scenario, I guess I could always just buy myself a 
M12, I believe, threaded rod from a Home Depot or other hardware store and use that instead. So in this box, we have something small. Let's see. What is this? Oh, this is totally unrelated. It is a SCT to two inch adapter for my 5SE. It's unrelated to this build, but I just happened to buy it all in bulk. Okay, what do we got up next? Uh, let's grab this box here. Everything's taped up quite well. Okay, so it looks like this is the pure extension for the tripod that comes with the Altaz GTI. This will be really useful for us running in equatorial mode, as it will prevent the telescope and tripod from colliding with each other by giving us some extra height. There's not much to see there, though. So I guess we'll grab another box from the uh, package. Come on, there we go. What's in this one? Come on. I'm just gonna flip it over. There we go. Ah, so this is actually the mount head for the Altaz GTI. So I guess this is kind of the most important part of this entire build. You can see just how small it is, right? That'll really be important for that portability aspect. And it weighs next to nothing. Comes with a little cable of some sort. Don't know what that is. Okay. And this is the biggest box. I'm betting this is probably the tripod. Yeah, that's exactly what this is. That's the spreader and these are the legs. So just take off this foam at the end, pull off the bubble wrap, and uh, see what it looks like. Plastic spreader. And the legs themselves. Uh, they don't feel the highest of quality. I might want to buy some sort of sturdier tripod later. Because particularly the spreader on that, it just feels a little flimsy. But there we go. The uh, one rod that's already pre-made and ready to go fits perfectly into the mount head. So that's that's good. It's a very good sign. And uh, I think that's it for all the boxes. So uh, thanks for joining me in this unboxing.
I'll include a picture after this video as to what everything looks like once it's assembled. So setting up the telescope uh, mount actually took longer than I expected. Um, the initial setup was easy, but after a few experiments, I found I actually needed to buy some replacement parts, and those took a while to come into stock. Um, I shouldn't say replacement parts. Upgrade parts, maybe? Because some of the parts that are included by default in these things are not as good as I would like. But with all that aside, I can finally show what the completed product looks like. And here it is, the assembled product. Um, so some of the things that I had to do was I had to get new counterweights. Uh, I was right, the counterweights that came with the Star Adventurer kit weren't quite good enough for what I needed them to do. I could not properly balance the telescope. So I've got these uh, Explore Scientific counterweights here. Um, there's two of them. Each one is 2.2 pounds for a total of 4.4 pounds of counterweight. They were the only counterweights I could find on the Canadian resellers who had a bore diameter similar in size to the counterweight shaft I'm using here, which is a 12 millimeter shaft. The bore holes in this is 14 millimeters. Additionally, for the end of the counterweight shaft, I actually bought myself an M6 thumb screw. It's much more sturdy and much easier to put on and remove than the, well, the screw that comes with it for a bottom cap. Uh, the Star Adventurer by default just comes with a washer and a little screw to hold all the counterweights on. I highly recommend just buying a cheap M6 thumb screw and using that instead. It, it, it's much better, much nicer. And lastly, the part that took the longest to get, the ADM saddle. A lot of sellers sell the ADM saddle, but unfortunately only one seller, Ontario Telescopes, actually sells it with the adapter that works for the Alt-As GTI. I'm sure you can create your own adapter easily enough. It's just a sheet of metal with some screw holes properly placed on it. So if you have the gear, you could do it yourself. But they are the only ones that I could see that sell both the saddle plus the adapter. And even with them being the only seller, they were out of stock on them and it took quite a while to get new stock. But thankfully they did and I managed to get this. And this works so much better than the built-in saddle. The built-in saddle only holds your telescope in place with a single screw. That means it doesn't have very good grip, but worse than that, it means it actually starts to dent and damage your saddle burr. The ADM has grip along the entire length of the saddle and therefore will not damage anything, but will also have a greater force holding your telescope in place, which makes me feel a lot better about it.